Hi, physics. This is Mr. Janowski. This is the next part. I don't know if this is three or four. It might be part four of the chapter eight slides. Um, so, yeah. First question. What are the units of impulse? It's kilograms, meters per second. So, remember, impulse is a change in momentum. Therefore, it must have the same units as momentum. So, kilograms, meters per second. Historically, Physics 1 students get that wrong a lot. They'll remember the units for momentum, but somehow they'll forget the units for impulse. They're the same units. Second question, what is always conserved in a collision? So if you remember back to the crash course video we watched in class the previous time, it is momentum. Momentum is always conserved. And so here is your law of conservation of momentum. Question three, what is an inelastic collision? That would be a collision in which some kinetic energy is lost. So if kinetic energy is conserved, that is an elastic collision. If some kinetic energy is lost to sound, heat, deformation, or whatever, then you have an inelastic collision. Notice I always pause because anelastic and an inelastic. All right, you know why I'm pausing. Uh, and then finally, what is a perfectly inelastic collision? So of the inelastic collisions, some subset of them are perfectly inelastic. And those are the inelastic collisions in which the objects stick together at the end. So that makes a collision perfectly inelastic. And then in class, we watch this video. So this is about the forces that a skater experiences uh, when he or she lands on the ice. So I will put a link to this video in the description to this video. So this whole thing, what we did in class with the slides today, was a good chance to review the physics we learned throughout the year. So let's start doing that here. I'll go through this kind of quickly. So a figure skater has a mass of 50 kilograms. What is the formula for her weight? Well, you might remember the formula for weight is F sub G equals MG. So we plug in for M, we plug in for little g, and we get F sub G, which means weight, is equal to 490 newtons. So I Google this. During a jump, a skater might have a hang time of about 0.7 seconds. So that means from the ice to our highest point takes about 0.35 seconds and from her highest point back down to the ice also takes about 0.35 seconds because the down motion mirrors the up motion so how can we figure out how much vertical velocity she has when she lands well this is just a kinematics problem so you take what you know from her highest point her vertical velocity so vy initial would be zero when you're at your highest point you're not moving up or down we know that a sub y is equal to little g, and we know what t is because I googled it. So you plug in all the numbers, and you end up with v sub y final. That is to say, her velocity right before she touches down on the ice is going to be minus 3.43 meters per second. So about 7 miles per hour downward. So if we know that is her final vertical velocity right before she touches the ice, how much momentum does she have in the y direction? Well, how do we figure out momentum? We use P equals MV. So we plug in for her mass. We plug in for the velocity we just solved for. And we get P sub Y is equal to minus 171.5 kilograms meters per second. So this is her momentum right before she touches down. So this was, this moment in time is the end of our kinematics problem. So that's the final part of the kinematics problem. It will, however, be the initial part of our next problem. So our next problem is going to start with her about to touch the about to touch the ice, so she is some infinitesimal distance above the ice, and it's going to end uh, once she has completed her landing on the ice. So after she's finished her landing, how much vertical velocity does she have and how much vertical momentum does she have? Uh, zilch. She's not moving up or down when she's done landing, therefore she has no vertical momentum once she's done landing. So how can we figure out her impulse? Well, impulse is change in momentum. It's delta P. It's P final minus P initial. So we just figured out that P final was zero. P initial was that negative number. So zero minus that negative number gives you a positive impulse of 171.5 kilograms meters per second. So the impulse she gets from the ice is positive. She was moving down. She had downwards momentum. And then the ice gave her a change in momentum upwards, uh, which is what stopped her from moving vertically. So we have that positive number. So in the video, it said that the total time of the landing is about 50 to 125 milliseconds. 
So we're using the small number, 50 milliseconds, which is 50 one thousandths of, one thousandths of a second, 0 0.050 seconds. So what force does she experience? What formula can you use for this? Uh, use the formula that's the title of this slide, J equals FT. So we just figured out J by looking at her change in momentum. We got the time from the video. Solve J equals FT for F, F equals J over T, plug in the numbers, and you get a force of 3,430 newtons. So how does this force compare to her weight? Remember, her weight was 490 newtons. So if you want to compare two numbers, one way you can do this is take the big number and divide it by the small number. So 3430 newtons divided by 490 newtons equals 7. So what does that mean? That means the force of her landing is 7 times her weight. So she doesn't get that force for very long. Remember, she's only getting it for 50 milliseconds, 50 one thousandths of a second. Um, but it's still a big force. So that's what the whole video was about. It was about the like repetitive use injuries that skaters get from landing. Um, and it's worth pointing out from landing successfully. These are not injuries you get from, you know, crashing and landing very awkwardly. Uh, these are successful landings. Uh, the problem is you're getting this gigantic force shooting up through your heel, your ankle, your shin, your knee. Um, you know what bones are connected to what bones um, all the way up. So yeah, people who figure skates and do it competitively and jump and land a lot get this force a lot. People who run also get repetitive use injuries. Um, people who dance get it. People who do lots of sports can get repetitive uh, use injuries. So not injuries from some horrible crash or collision or anything. Um, just injuries from, you know, banging your bones together uh, too often with too much force. And then after that, we watched this short video, um, just high speed footage of golf balls being hit by different golf clubs. So I'll put a link uh, in the description to this video too for this video. And then after that, I think that was the last slide. Yeah, that was the last slide. After that, we did a we do. Uh, the second problem, the second problem from homework three. So I will also make a video for that, and I'll put that video in the playlist for chapter eight. So hopefully you found this helpful.